college basketball. Talk about the we are now with the holiday tournaments. Mm-hmm. I mean, the greatest time of the year in college basketball, other than March Madness, right. of course. But um, talk about the importance of these tournaments, even though they're in the beginning of the season, playing on a neutral site against other major teams from major conferences. Talk about the importance of that for the birth of the NCAAs. Well, I think it gives us something to watch, and we always enjoy that during the holidays. But more importantly, <laughs> I think it's about building your RPI and getting some marquee wins to help your tournament resume mm-hmm. in March. I think this is where you see teams build their resume up for the NCAA tournament and get tested for, obviously, as you know, what's a rigorous conference schedule. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and, and talk about which teams have impressed you early so far in the tournaments. I mean, Tennessee, for me, they're running through the Old Spice class. I think it's Gonzaga, and I know, you know, Gonzaga And they're going to play each other. Oh, Tennessee. I can't wait. Yep. I just think that Gonzaga, there's so many people that can be the assassin. You have one of the more underrated point guards of the country in Jeremy Pargo. Mm-hmm. You have wings who can shoot the basketball. But Austin you also Day. have Austin Day, who in a lot of ways is like a Swiss Army knife because he can Ooh. do a little bit of everything. That's right. He can face up. He can post up. He can put the ball on the floor. And when people talk about textbook jump shooters, nobody has a textbook jump shot like Austin Day. That's right. Right, and he's six ten. That's a, like, and that's why he's a seen sophomore. as a top. Yeah, sophomore, seen as a top five pick in the Cam draft. prospect. Absolutely, absolutely. And and is this the year Gonzaga can make the final four? I think it is. I'm very interested to see how they play UConn on December 20th in Seattle. That's going to be very telling. But mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing I like about them is their depth. At their wings, they play Matt Bolden and mm-hmm. Stephen Gray, but there's also Michael Dans. Right. They can beat you with the perimeter shooting, but they can also feature Josh Heifel inside. inside. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different ways they can attack, and I think when you get down the stretch in the NCAA tournament, you're going to have to find different ways to win basketball games, and Mark Few's team obviously can do that. That's right, and, and, and talk about Mark Few. I mean, he has the third highest winning percentage for active coaches. Do you think he will stay in Gonzaga for the rest of his career? I do, because when you look at guys who find a home, like Mark Few, like Jay Wright at Villanova, mm-hmm. you know, I think people, when they find a home like and Bruce they're Pearl comfortable. Like Bruce Pearl in Tennessee. Bruce Pearl in Tennessee. When they find a home and they're comfortable in the surroundings and they feel like they can compete year in, year out, and their family's happy, you never want to mess with happiness, to quote Jim Valvano. And I think Mark Few, Jay Wright, perfect examples of that. Which other mid-majors do you do you have in mind that, that can catch your eye? Like St. Mary's. Do you think St. Mary's can be a threat we with Patrick? Mills, but I mean, we have to talk about Davidson, and we have to talk about Stephen Curry, and mm-hmm. a guy who really, I've never seen anybody in college basketball not need space like Stephen Curry. He finds a way to get his shot off, he finds a way to still at the same time get his teammates involved. He's a, a real, real joy to watch for any college basketball fan. Right, and the little things that he has, the little the skill set, the little things from his father, Del Curry, that's how you can tell he's a he's a pro son. Absolutely. That's, that's for sure, and Andrew Lovedale is a force inside. I mean, he, he that that's going to give them a great opportunity, but Jason Richards losing him, like, can, like Curry's point guard ability, it, will it can it grow throughout the season? No, it can. He's going to develop into that, and he'll probably have to play some point guard it, when he plays in the NBA. But it's all about picking his spots, knowing when to pull up, knowing when to penetrate, knowing when to find Lovedale. He needs to have that maturity, and with more repetition at the point guard position, he's going to get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, wow, another conference, Pac-10, the Pac-10 conference. Who they've lost a lot of talent, and uh, even though they still have James Harden and Chase Budinger as well as Darren Collison, but still. Uh, can the Pac-10 get more than three teams in this year? No, I think that's going to be difficult. But when you think about the Pac-10 the last couple of years, you have to look at the Rolls-Royce of that conference, and that's UCLA. Mm-hmm. And Look, we know about their backcourt with Darren Collison, Josh Shipp, and a dynamite freshman and Drew Holiday, but they need to find a way to manufacture easy baskets. So somebody up front, one of their two freshmen, Jamison Morgan or Drew Gordon, is going to have to elevate their game to another level and find a way for the Bruins to have some hope inside the paint. Now, DeMar DeRozan at USC. A uh, great athlete, but a little his skill set is not there to me. Like, could he turn out to be a Harold Miner or a Jeff Petrapagne? Well, I mean, that's way too early to tell about that. What, what he needs to worry about right now is playing with his teammates, playing off Taj Gibson, playing with Daniel Hackett, and kind of taking things one day at a time. When you're a freshman and you have expectations, sometimes people anoint you places that you really haven't achieved yet. So it's going to be a day-by-day process for DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, yeah it'll be interesting, but his dunks are crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Blake Griffin. Great decision for him to come back to school, right? Well, it's obvious that Blake Griffin has taken his game to another level, but I think the supporting cast on this Oklahoma team is really what gives it separation. To me, Willie Warren, 
their freshman mm-hmm. lead guard, the yes. second coming of Khalid El Amin. Every mm-hmm. time this guy puts on a jersey, he feels like he's the best player on the planet. <laughs> That's right. That confidence is so important. I don't players like because I, I I'm a proponent of someone going to a school that needs that jump that needs right. that jolt in the same conference right. you don't have to go to like yukon right. you can go to south florida and still make a name why th- don't players I, do that i think it has to be the right fit and that's why i love what michael rosario did at rucker this guy stayed home to want it to be the pied piper to be the prince of new mm-hmm. jersey and michael rosario is a perfect example of a guy who could play at a high major level but chose to stay home for rutgers because he knew right away he would be featured on offense mm-hmm. he would be the primary option on that end of the floor and you watch Michael Rosario, a guy who's going to have major, major high contributing years in the Big East. Oh, that's for sure. Definitely. Definitely a newcomer, uh, rookie of the year candidate. Absolutely. For sure.